In this video, we're going to go over actually downloading data from our server. In the last couple of videos, we've gone over creating CSV files and uploading CSV files. Now we want to download a CSV file. It's actually a fairly simple thing to do. What we need to do is create a view, set it so that it creates some data, use a CSV writer, then set the response to be downloaded. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this. First thing we'll do is we'll open up our data views. And if you look, we've imported CSV. We've also imported HTTP response, and we've gone ahead and imported the generic view as well. First step we're gonna do is we're going to create a new class called CSV file view. This is going to inherit from the generic view, and this is going to be what we use to download our CSV file. We'll override the get method so we can process what we need to. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set a response variable with our HTTP response. We're going to set the content type to text slash CSV so the browsers know what kind of file we're downloading. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the content disposition of attachment, file name equals, and then we're going to use the format method to set users.csv. This is going to create a string that has attachment, semicolon, file name equals, and it tells the name of the file that's going to be downloaded. We're going to set this to a response header of content disposition. The purpose of this is this actually tells the browser to force a download of the data that we're trying to use instead of just displaying it in the browser. This is a really odd way to do it in my opinion and actually took a while to figure out, but once I figured it out, I knew what it took and it's kind of a weird idiosyncrasy of the web. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our field names like we normally did with our CSV files. And then we're going to query for our data. We're going to user.objects. We're going to get the values. And we're just going to expand our field names tuple so that it sends it in as arguments. The values is going to return a dictionary-like object that's actually a query set so that we can use the dict writer. So with that, we're going to create our dict writer and set it to writer. We're going to set the file that we would normally use in dict writer. Instead, we're going to use response. So we're just going to write to the response object. Then we're going to set field names equal to field names so that we know what to write where. And then next we're just going to use the writer.write header and then proceed with our for loop of for our row and our data. We're just going to use our writer and do write row, pass it in our row. And then finally we'll return a response. It's really all there is to creating a basic CSV file and letting a user download it on the view side. The interesting part is for our dict writer, we're not passing it in a file, we're passing it in a response object, which is actually kind of cool that it's versatile enough to allow you to write data to it like this and then return it as needed. There's two final steps that we need to actually do so that this is usable. The first is if we open up our urls.py and then go in and add our URL for users data, we're going to use the CSV file as view and set the name of our link to CSV download. That way, if we access the users data URL, then it automatically downloads. Then it prompts us to download the file. Finally, we need to go ahead and link to it in our HTML file create a new div and then add our href and can do URL and then set the name of our URL to be CSV download and then we'll go ahead and name the link to download users so that we know what to click on to download our CSV file of users. Now if we'll actually open this up in the browser and click on download users, we see we get prompted to download the file. We're going to go ahead and set it to open up with Sublime and then there we go. We have our data in Sublime with the username and email. To verify that, let's go ahead and open up the admin, do a quick login and look at users. And then if you compare with Sublime text and the admin in the background you can see it's the same user data in the database. So that's it. Over the last three videos you've learned how to create CSV files in Python, you learned how to upload and save CSV data to the database, and then now you've learned how to go ahead and download that CSV data as well. There's many more topics that can be discussed with this and we're actually going to hit some of those in the future. So with that that gives you the basics of what you need to know to deal with dreaded CSV files.